So those of you that follow me on Instagram will know already that I tried several times to print a freaking astronaut <laughs> and it was a nightmare but I learnt a lot and I'd like to share those things with you now about setting up your printer and also adjusting the software and which software to use so stick with me. There are a couple of different versions of this. Um, it's on Thingiverse and it's called the Apollo Astronaut. Um, basically, it's um, obviously somebody's own version designed by them. Uh, I'll put the link down in the uh, description of the Apollo Astronaut. And the different versions are whether you print it with um, supports that somebody's designed in with the model, uh, which kind of like, you know, stick down and just kind of support it without having extra support provided by the print software and that's supposed to just basically um, support the print while the printer goes in does what it's doing and it did quite a good job the only thing that's sort of really bad about it is if you can tell from there so it leaves dimples behind. I mean, this is a failed print anyway, but the actual supports leave dimples behind, and when you pull them, it pulls holes in the model. So can you imagine a horror that you finish your model, it's got these supports on it, you pull the supports off, and it breaks the model? Um, I'd be, well, I was. Apart from it, it was a ruined print anyway, but I was pretty miffed about that. Uh, it didn't finish it right either, it just was altogether wrong. So, that was the first attempt. I then went away and thought, well, it can't be the model. Surely it's all right. So I thought, well, I'll print it on a what's called a raft, which means that everything the printer does is based on a platform. So this sits on a platform and then it can't move around or anything else. And it makes it easier to break the model away from the raft at the end of the day because it, it prints these um, sort of little bits of plastic that are meant to break away afterwards. Um, but as you can see, I started to find really weird things. This failed because after it got to this stage, something shifted and it started to print everything like a millimeter off and then a couple of layers later, another millimeter off. And when you bear in mind that this is, you know, sort of that is probably eight hours. Um, so it's in the middle of the night. So you wake up in the morning and it's had another sort of six hours. And then it's got kind of this far and it's all over the place. And you might just have a jumbled load of rubbish left on the print bed. It's not very good. So this fortunately happened more or less straight away. And this gave me an indication as to what was really going on. Because as you can see there, it's just kind of failed. So it's failed straight away, really. Um, it's produced the raft, which strangely enough looks all right. And then immediately it started to kind of move across and everything's moved across. Um, and obviously I called it the stairway effect, stairway to hell, really, because it obviously ruined everything. Um, but obviously it's something that you can more easily diagnose and fix. Well, fingers crossed. So I got in touch with Ultimaker and um, I have to say that Ultimaker support in the UK um, probably one of the worst support companies I've ever come across. Um, there was a young um, person uh, that seemed to be the entire support. He had a manager but his manager was never available um, and he went on a two week holiday which meant that um, for two weeks I had nothing. And um, basically they just pointed me to a website which really wasn't even their website. So that link to the website is in my description. And everyone seems to talk about the short belts skipping and the short belts are the belts from the motor to the axes. So looked at those, now they're fine. But looked at the long belts and they did have a little bit of play in them. So I thought, well, maybe those need adjusting. Well, they're not adjustable really because the way that the Ultimaker's built, um, the pivot points for each of the axes is actually built into the chassis and they can't move. 
it's not like you can sort of adjust them a tiny bit. Um, the pulley um, cogs themselves can be tightened. Obviously, I went around with the Allen key that Automaker do give you. Made sure everything was properly, properly tightened. Um, so I thought, right, well, I'm done now. So let's move on. And, um, and I started to print the next one. And I was so happy after 19 hours it got to this stage. And um, yeah, it shifted again right at the top. And that's roughly probably about there off. Um, three, four hours off finishing. So 24 hour print um, and you're almost done. And then it does it again. And yes, I am kind of maybe pushing the limits because I don't want a little model like some of the other little models I've done that are that big. I wanted something that was the maximum that my Automaker 2 can print. Um, that is basically from top to bottom with a bit of support underneath it. Um, the, the biggest or the highest, tallest uh, model that I can print. And um, I did upscale it and play around, so that's bigger than the original model. Um, but obviously, bigger is better, right? Well, obviously, the disappointment after that, as you can imagine, you know, wasted all that. And by this stage, you know, I've gone through um, about half a roll. So uh, half a roll of my PLA is just kind of wasted. And they're not even paperweights because they're so light. So they literally are wasted. I've kept them just to do this video, and other than that, I'll just chuck them away. It's a shame there's not a machine out there that you can mince all this back up and make your own filament. I mean, come on guys, someone do that. So you, all your wasted stuff you just put back into a machine, it minces it down and then produces like filament again. That's the ultimate ultimaker then, isn't it? Um, so anyway, it was time to try something else. So I tried Simplify 3D, thinking that it was the Cura software that was causing a problem. Um, it, Cura comes with Ultimaker, it's their version of the software, so it should work fine, right? So I thought, well, let's try something else. Simplify 3D, um, it's a paid for software, and you do get money back guarantee, um, but obviously you've got to pay for it up front. So I paid for it up front, installed it, and chose that I have the Ultimaker 2 from the drop down, and then just set off again. Um, and that's what Simplify did over and over and over again. Um, so I spoke to them, and they pointed me in the same direction as the page from Ultimaker. So I explained back to Simplify that I checked all, you know, the, the belts and everything, they were all fine, and I just didn't understand what was going on. So we went through print speeds, um, the top and bottom layer adjustments, um, fill densities, because I mean, um, the first one I did was quite a heavy fill density and the second one was um, a lighter fill density but I didn't seem to make any difference. You do get a better quality finish with a better fill density but also um, it was a thicker um, actual um, layer. So I chose to do an 8mm, uh, sorry, a 08 mil layer rather than a 4mm layer and you do get a better print quality finish on that. So after playing around with Simplify for um, about a week and going back and forth with their technical department, um, I kind of just lost the plot really. I was just so fed up with the fact that I was trying to print a model and just wasn't coming out. So I thought, I'd just get my money back. So I spoke to the guys at three, um, Simplify and they said, no problem, um, you know, sorry it didn't work out. And there you go, gave me a refund, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, I then uh, went back and looked and there had been a recent update to Cura, the free uh, slicing software from Ultimaker. So I got the new version of Cura, tried that and I got similar results again so it wasn't that. So what I decided to do was print some um, special tensioners for the long belts um, and then just go around with the Allen key on the printer. Um, to actually check the whole thing because obviously all the axes are controlled by the actual chassis. I thought, well, I'll just go around and tighten it. And that's when I found out that these things might be put together okay, but um, either by use, and mine's had some 300 hours of use now, um, or by sort of shipment, and it was packed quite well, the things come loose quite a lot. So I've gone around and I've tightened everything up, made sure that everything is lovely and tightened, again, using the Allen keys they give you, which is great. 
and then for my 3D printed um, belt tensioners, uh, fitted those and they clear everything fine, they don't get in the way, they don't foul anything. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go again. Um, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound, I've got um, about half a roll of uh, white PLA filament left, rigid ink I use for my PLA filament. And um, let's just give it a go. But I thought, you know, I'm going to kind of just go in for the best possible outcome I can. So I chose in my settings to get um, a layer height of 0.1 millimeter. Um, I then chose the shell thickness of 0.8 millimeters. Um, I enabled retraction and I changed the retraction settings so that the Z hop, when it's retracting, um, is not. 0.075 and I also changed my print speed I was printing at 65 um, millimeters a second but I've chosen now to slow that down to 55 um, and basically thought well the fill density again you know it seemed to be that the the outer shell thickness is the key so let's go with a thinner fill density so um, I chose a fill density of 5% so we've got a shell thickness of uh, 0.8 uh, we've got layer thickness of 0.1 its printing speed is 55 we've got a slight retraction of the nozzle um, I chose to have um, again um, a brim um, and also to have it generate its own supports I didn't go with the model that had the built-in supports anymore I went for the original model with no supports whatsoever um, which doesn't leave marks on the head and doesn't ruin the back of the model and, um, and off I went and uh, it came up and said 37 hours so um, I was thinking then that's great so I'll monitor it for 37 hours and just really hope that it finishes off and it was the longest 37 hours ever but there we go that's the finished fella and um, it's really good you know it's just so clean and clear it really really is the best I mean if you compare the first one with just like the arm there so obviously that's it the model came out great really 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 pleased with it yes it was the longest 30 god knows how many hours in my life um, but it came out and it was just brilliant you know the feet are excellently finished off so crisp and clear and the, the face of the helmet is brilliant the arms the little finger details the details on it it's all so so clear um, you know there's no sort of even layer marks or anything like that it really is so clear the worst part about it, by far, is the back. Um, and I guess that is because it is printed like that and there's a bit of overhang there. It wasn't supported um, and it's just got a bit scruffy. But, so the other adjustments I made to the printer as well was actually on the printer um, and I changed um, the speed of um, the head when it's moving around. So between it finishing um, at one point and moving to the other, I've changed that dramatically. So it's very slow now, it doesn't sort of skip and move across really fast. And I've also changed um, the power for um, the, uh, the, the motors as well, um, that control the pulleys, the short pulleys. So that they're drawing less current, and the theory behind that is that the motors then get um, less hot, and are less likely to skip or cause problems themselves. So I've made my printer slower, but in doing so, I've made it far, far more accurate. Um, and ultimately, I think that's that's probably what everybody wants. I know we all want fast prints. We want something to print out, boom, want it right now, as quick as I can, because I'm not waiting 35 hours, you know, I want it now. But if you are putting the time and effort in, and you spent a lot of money on your printer, and obviously uh, filament's not cheap, but I suppose it's, you know, it's not so expensive, um, but you want a good model at the end of it. You want something that you know is sturdy, looks great. You can pass to people and show off and what you've done. And I think that the settings I've got now um, are just the greatest settings for the balance of speed and actually 
quality that you get out with it. Um, obviously, yes, I do check my print bed levels pretty much every third or fourth print, big print that I do. If it's something um, small, um, like I've done this, which um, holds a phone and um, a watch charger, uh, then I'm not too fussed about that and I can print that nice and quick and um, it comes out great. But if I'm printing something quite intricate where I want the details to be okay and I want to show it off to people then I'll stick with the, the slow but accurate uh, print systems, uh, print settings sorry, and um, I'm quite happy with that. So there's my model came off my Ultimaker 2. So I guess the only thing we're missing now is a time lapse. Cue the time lapse. So I hope you liked it, please leave any comments down below, um, let me know what your uh, settings are or what you find works for, uh, for your printer the best. Uh, if you've played around with Simplify 3D and thought it was absolutely fantastic compared to uh, Cura, uh, then let me know that as well. I haven't got anything against um, Simplify 3D, it just didn't fix the problem for me and because it's quite expensive I didn't choose to keep it because um, well, you know, Cura does the job perfectly as you can see from the model. You just need the settings to be right and you also need your printer to be so finely tuned um, to do, you know, the big print jobs that are the complete expanse of, uh, of the build capacity. So, thanks very much for watching and um, I'll see you again.